Well, I've been saying it. I've been saying it for the last few weeks that there's something happening in Israel. There's something happening with the Temple Mount. There's something happening. I stayed there longer than I was supposed to. This is Keith Johnson, your host of the BFA International Audio Blog, where I'm just telling you right now, I, okay, I'm overwhelmed. I have actually come during the Keymaker's lunch break, folks. He's actually eating. What are you eating, Keymaker? He's eating some kind of... Uh, he made me go and get him some some chicken fried rice for me to come over. I, listen, I negotiate with the guy so I can get this stuff up. This is time sensitive. Breaking news just happened. Hot off the presses. Uh, <laughs> folks, I'm excited. I am really excited right now because I've gotten a chance to see the fruit of our labor over these last few weeks. The special thing that I did today, I actually called over to Israel to my friend Yehuda Glick, who just hosted an emergency meeting in Jerusalem on the issue regarding the freedom uh, to pray on the Temple Mount. It was well received. This weekend, when he called, he said, hey, listen, could you put together a quick video? I did it. And about the day before I was going to record it, something came to me. And that was this. Here, this is going to be a video where basically everyone there is going to be speaking Hebrew, not English. So why not go ahead and start the video out in English or Hebrew and then switch to English for you folks? And so I did both. And it was well received. I called uh, Yehuda today and asked him if he would get on this audio blog with me because we just found out this morning there was an article written as a result of the uh, the conference itself. One of the things they highlighted is this particular uh, title. It says this U.S. pastor urges global campaign for Temple Mount prayer rights. Arut Sheba. It's the Israel National News. I Woke up to this. I called the keymaker. He's not supposed to be dealing with me today. I said, keymaker, is there any way for our folks, if I can get this interview, can we go ahead and put up this time sensitive breaking news, hot off the presses, audio blog? And he said, yes, if you bring me rice. No, that's what you said. And now he's eating rice. I'm recording. We're trying to work this out. Here's the interview, folks. I want you to listen to it right now. You're going to get a chance to see exactly what I feel compelled to do. Uh, Listen to the interview. And then after that, I'll come right back to you. Okay, folks, I am here. (laughs) I've gotten a hold of Yehuda. He's in Israel. I know you've been very busy, Yehuda. Could you just greet the BFA uh, audio blog listeners right now from uh, from the land of Israel? Okay, shalom to the BFA audio blog from Jerusalem, Israel. (laughs) God bless you all. Yehuda, you are amazing. We've had an amazing journey. Could Could you just take us back a little bit? I was in the land of Israel. I stayed longer than I was supposed to, and you and I had a few... (laughs) happenstance meetings uh, where we where we we just got a chance to go deeper into this but something happened that I don't think a lot of people realize and that is while I was there you actually uh, went up for a trip to the Temple Mount by yourself just for a time of prayer and reflection you had your normal folks that were around you and and something happened up there that folks have not heard that since that day which is I believe 34 days ago you have not been allowed uh, to ascend can you just bring us up to date on what exactly happened well, I was uh, on the, usually I go over to the Temple Mount with groups with my guide, and uh, then I pretty much talk to them. But here I had a, a day that I didn't have any a group, so I decided to go up on my own to to talk to God as I as I as I do at Temple Mount. I usually go up to Temple Mount every single day. Anyway, yeah. that day I went up, and I was at the beginning of it didn't seem like it'll be a quiet day, and uh, seconds after I entered the Temple Mount, I suddenly heard yelling and cursing uh, from all over. And, and it was not uh, just the uh, people who were walking around there. It was the, the walks people. These are the people that are in charge of, of order. And, uh, and uh, these are religious people. And they started cursing me and yelling at me. And uh, I, as I always do, I ignored them. Uh, but suddenly at a certain point, they, were, they started getting close to me. And it was really... Uh, it was really uh, like frightening, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I I was asking the policemen there to keep them away from me. Please uh, protect me. You know what, what policemen are supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, instead of uh, keeping them away from me, within uh, just a few seconds uh, or a couple of minutes, I was already found myself arrested, mm-hmm. and I was told that I'm in charge, uh, and because of me, the 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 people here were. Uh, uh, losing their temper, mm-hmm. and therefore uh, I was arrested. And then, after the, after a few hours being in 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 imprisoned, I was told that I cannot be going to the Temple Mount for another four and a half months. Hmm. 
I must say it was pretty shocking. And if I wouldn't see the pictures myself on the video that I had taken at the time, I, I would I probably wouldn't believe the story either. Yeah. But uh, the story, the, the whole scene has been videoed directly and it's quite obvious that I'm totally doing nothing but just the very fact that I'm mm -hmm. walking around and, and I'm alive. Well, it's interesting, Yehuda. You and I got a chance to spend some time after that event took place and there were a couple places that we went to. And what I found... Um, disturbing was as you and I walked um, back in the in the Muslim quarter as we were we were going to get up on top of a yeshiva take a look at the Temple Mount even children <laughs> would start chanting uh, when they saw you in other words they had become familiar with who you are and uh, and I knew that when I was there the one time I, as I, I greeted you on the Temple Mount that started this whole thing I listened to some women chanting Allah Akbar Allah Akbar as you walked by and I just thought that that was so so disturbing, but you just seem very focused. Uh, even as we were walking in, that would happen. You just seem very focused. But this definitely uh, shook you up, I think, in terms of being arrested and removed and banned from the Temple Mount. Since then, what is it that you have decided to do? In other words, 34 days, I believe it is now. Can you let can you let the listeners just know what you've been doing for the last 34 days? Uh, it happened a little more than 34 days, but I began a few days later. Uh, 34 days ago, I began a hunger strike. Mm. And ever since then, I've been 34 days without any eating, only drinking, only liquid. Mm -hmm. um, I pretty much found myself in, in, in a shocking situation where, as I said, instead of being protected by the police, I, I personally pretty much ignore whenever I'm attacked. I totally ignore them. I try to say that, listen, you have no impact on me. I'm here with God. And even though they are using the name of God, and unfortunately, I would say they're really... Uh, shaming the name of God by using his name to to uh, encourage violence, they uh, were, I, I pretty much expected the police to protect me. Yeah. And uh, it was shocking for me that the Israeli police fail the weak mm -hmm. when they see uh, these people yelling and uh, they decide to uh, ban me from the Temple Mount. As I said, I am on a hunger strike. I Maybe my body is a little weak, but I am strong in spirit. Amen. And I quite uh, quite understanding that that uh, this is this message ever since I started the hunger strike is really getting around many mm -hmm. people are, are trying to are mm -hmm. growing interest in what's going on mm -hmm. and uh, and, I, and I, I, I feel strong support here in Israel well I have to tell you um, as I as I watched you uh, beginning this my heart was was uh, was was very very much moved uh, I spent time in prayer. I have been really, really, really reflecting on the journey that you've been on, and I've tried to do everything I can to stand alongside with you. Something happened in the last few days. You called me on Friday of last week, and you said, Keith, we're having an emergency meeting. And for this emergency meeting, we're calling people from around the country to come that are concerned about the freedom uh, to pray for, for Jewish people on the rights to pray on the Temple Mount. You asked me to do a video, but not so much on the video. Can you just tell me about... What inspired you to do the conference and what the response to the conference was? As I said, we, we felt that the situation lately, the coming, you know, if till now we were, went on the Temple Mount and we were screamed at and yelled and cursed, lately it, it, things are getting much worse. And uh, um, the, the, uh, uh, the violent people on Temple Mount were, were, were becoming more and more uh, <laughs> aggressive. Mm -hmm. And it, this caused things which happened lately which were for us were strong bleeming uh red beaming uh, red lights and that though that is first of all the entire seven days of passover which jews are obligated to go to the temple mount mm -hmm. the temple mount was closed down for jews because of the violence of the of the arabs instead of uh, uh having the police confront the and uh, the, the 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 arab uh, uh violence they closed it down for Jews. Hmm. And uh, by the way, when they closed it down for all non-Muslims, so what happened is that, that people were joking around and said, if you're a tourist, you can't go to the Temple Mount, only if you're a terrorist. And, so you're uh, telling me, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me that during the time of Pesach, that the entire, Jew, wait. The entire week of Pesach, no pe person who was a non-Muslim was allowed onto the Temple Mount. Wait, wait, so you mean, if, wait, Yehuda, you're confused here. You, I know sometimes that they say the Jews cannot ascend. You're telling me during Pesach, if I would have been there during Pesach, and I'm waiting in line to go up to the Temple Mount, I can't go. No, no, the place they closed it down for 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 any visitors who are non-Muslim. 
They closed okay. it down. Not only did they close it, I, I'll show. I can send you video pictures that we had Hamas flags all over. We had they 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 they, they used their, their their mosque as a storage house for stones, and the the police were 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 being stoned, and the police uh, by by principle do not go into the mosque, and the Muslims take advantage of this. So, okay. they, so the police had closed down the Temple Mount for the entire week of Passover mm -hmm. for non-Muslims. So that you, was the first. Okay, go ahead. Second story, uh, the day after Passover, a group of like 60 uh, ultra-Orthodox Jews went up the Temple Mount. They were divided into two groups. The first group was 25, uh, which consisted of like five adults and 20 children. Children, I'm talking about ages 6 to 12. And as soon as they entered the Temple Mount, they were surrounded and they were... Uh, it was like a second before a lynch. They were attacked by by women, by adults, by by elderly. They were attacked by yelling, and these kids were were frightened to death, and they were crying and cry and 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 their their adults had to tell them, "Don't worry, we're we're being protected." And finally, the police, instead of protecting this this group, uh, immediately took them out of the, of the Temple Mount. So what we see here is that the an es the uh, escalating the uh, violence on the Temple Mount, and we we're, we're afraid it's like a a a, a steep uh, ramp down, which is very very frightening. Okay, so so you're telling me that so then after that event, they, they right after that, they right after that, and, and that video of that of the, that those children mm -hmm. was sent around, and, and we we already had over a hundred thousand people who have seen this video, mm -hmm. and, and and we decided we, enough is enough. Okay. And this is what this, this was the, the the headline of the of the conference we held the emergency conference we held last night. Okay. It was Ad Khan, which mm -hmm. means in Hebrew enough is enough, and we're not going to tolerate this anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, see, and it, that... and it was shocking that with, within a very short notice, yeah, through the uh, just only through the uh, Facebook, we filled the uh, the uh, the the uh, Begin Center last night to a point that there was not enough room for the people who had came. We we were expecting like 150 people, and we had a turn a turn a turn down of, of, of over 400. Wow! And people were coming, and people said uh, we had including members of Knesset, including uh, well known rabbis, including students, simple students from 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 universities, or people who just poured in, mm -hmm. religious, unreligious, ultra orthodox. We all agreeing. That enough is enough. We're not going to tolerate this anymore. So you you allowed me to uh, you allowed me to send a, a short video. Uh, I know this was a Hebrew speaking conference, and I, about a, a couple days before uh, I was going to do that, I realized, wait a minute, this is all Hebrew speaking. I should at least do something in Hebrew. And you you you, you allowed my video to be played. What? <laughs> it was played entirely. It was it touched the hearts of people. It was applause, and the Israeli. Uh, uh, Israel International News the website took it and today and put it out in a headline in English. Uh, it was really everybody was there, so that was it was that was a real touching message. Okay, well I, I have to say this, and, and the folks that are listening, you know, this is not some uh, this is not some PR deal here. This is this is about truly coming together, uh, Jew and Gentile together uh, around God's holy hill, and 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 calling for people to stand uh, for the right for people to pray. And again, this, like I said, sometimes people look at this and they, and, and they say, well, this is a small group of uh, Jewish people they call right-wingers. I don't know, I, I couldn't believe that, that, that people call, it, call this. No, no, these are people from a vast vari a variety of areas that are saying they have not had the ability to ascend. Of course, myself, being a United Methodist <laughs> uh, pastor, being kicked off because I, I gave you a hug and, and greeted you. And then, of course, we know the story from there. And you and a number of people now for, during Passover, anyone, no one that was not a Muslim could even uh, ascend to the Temple Mount. You did this conference last night. Uh, it yeah. was an overwhelming response. I've heard nothing but positive. Not only that, we, we had the, the Religious Affairs Ministry came out with an announcement in, in, in honor of this, that, 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 they, that they, they vow Jews will pray on the Temple Mount. And Amen. It was, I mean, it so, was it was it was an unbelievable conference, and uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, as I said, the story uh, of your video and the and the minister of of uh, 
of, of religious affairs was brought up together today on the Israel National wonderful, News uh, wonderful. website, and it was really received a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of respect. Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna stop here, Yehuda. I believe that uh, God has brought us together for a reason. I believe that this this uh, from a number of different places. Uh, I brought the verse from Isaiah. You know that this is supposed to be a place uh, of prayer for for all people. But there's some specific mm-hmm. things I think that we can do, and I, I really want you, if you can, if you could just talk to our listeners. I'm going to challenge them. I'm going to I'm going to go in first on this, but I want I want you to help us on maybe a specific thing that Liba tell us what the organization is, what it means. Give us one thing that you all do that we can actually, in practicality, not just pray about it, not just talk about it. I'm going to support this. I'm going to challenge the BFA audio blog listeners to support this. We're going to put up something on our page called on the BFA Projects page, bfaprojects.com. It's going to say something about uh, freedom to pray, whatever we call it. But tell us something that you all do in practicality that we can support. And I'm speaking financially. Give us something that Liba does right now. Tell us what the organization is. Tell us something that you do. Okay, I personally am the director of an organization called the Temple Mount Heritage Foundation, but I combined together with another organization called the Israel Independence Fund, and we established, just a few months ago, less than a year ago, last September, we established the LIBA, LIBA, which stands for the Initiative for Jewish Freedom on the Temple Mount. Mm-hmm. And uh, we uh, have... Give us it have, in Hebrew. Have, Tell us what it is in Hebrew. <laughs> HaLIBA, yeah. HaMezam Lechofesh Yehudi Behar Habay. Mm-hmm. Hofesh Yehudi Barabai, Jewish Freedom on the Temple Mount. Mm-hmm. And what the Liba does, uh, it attacks the, this, this topic on several different uh, aspects, but I would say one of our most important things is actually just bringing people to the Temple Mount. Okay. We bring busloads of children, of groups, of community centers, of, of, of synagogue prayers, pray, prayer groups. We bring them onto the Temple Mount. And we actually... Uh, in the, at the beginning, we, we brought just a few a few, few busloads. Uh, I would say at the beginning, we brought like one or two a week. And now we have a request for almost like one or two a day. Mm. And 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 uh, this is this is a major uh, 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 one of our major expenses is just bringing busloads of, of of groups to the Temple Mount because we we are here to say to the, the Arab population, we're not giving up. Here we are. Amen. We are here. To, to stay, mm-hmm. and if you're going to have to learn to cope with that, you're going to have to learn to tolerate that, and if not, you, we're going to make sure you get used to the fact that here we are. Amen. And and you step in the stop referring to Jews on the Temple Mount as 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 a fly in the air that you just have to take your hand and 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 push them away. Mm-hmm. No, it's not that Jews come to the Temple Mount because that's their only holy place in the mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. and that's the place, the only place where a Jew is obligated to come, mm-hmm. and uh, that's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. And if you want to learn to live with us, you're welcome to do mm-hmm. so. Amen. And if not, then you're going to have this tough luck because yeah. we are going. We're here. We're here to stay. Yeah. And these busloads of children are. Not, we're not giving up. We're not running away. Okay. We're not escaping your violence. And okay. you, you're maybe uh, even uh, vice versa. Your violence is just going to strengthen our understanding for the need for our presence on the Temple Mount. Amen. Now, J- Yehuda, one of the things I've appreciated about you, and I've watched you uh, on, on news shows, I've watched you talk to different people, I've seen you interact with people. One of the things that you talk about, and I want to kind of end with this, is just the way that you have said on a regular basis, uh, your friendships, uh, you know, this is not an anti-Muslim deal. You've had friendships with Muslim people, you have uh, relationships with the people, even up on the Temple Mount, whether it be police or not, and that you've always called for some mutual respect. And I think that that's the thing that people are missing in this. This is not, you know, you're not raising the flag saying, let's, you know, let's go, sounds really bad, let's go, you know, wipe out a mosque. That's not your, that's not your, your, your message at all. Your message is there needs to be room for mutual respect for us to be able to coexist. Am I, am I right about that? You're 100% right. Look, look, the, the vision of the uh, of of the Jewish people returning back to the land of Israel, the vision is that the Temple Mount mm-hmm. should be a house of prayer for all nations. Amen. As Isaiah says, as Micha says, yes. And this means that on the on the Temple Mount should be room for anybody who wants to express his prayer to God, mm. Jew, non-Jew, b- b- Christian or Muslim. And mm. it means that on the Temple Mount, the next verse of Isaiah is that, and there will be no more warfare. Huh. Which means the Temple Mount is the place where the peace message to the world will come out. Amen. And instead of today, people calling in the name of God for, for violence and for hatred and mm. for instigating uh, terror, t- 
Temple Mount should be the center of the world of, of religious tolerance. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are here to respect anybody who wants to pray. And we're here to say to the police, remove from the Temple Mount anybody who his ideology is violent. Amen. Well, I will say something. You already know this. I've said it to you in words. You're going to see it in action. I am saying right now in front of the BFA audio blog listeners, we are beginning a project right now to support you and Liba in bringing busloads of children, busloads of adults, people from all over Israel to uh, God's holy hill where they're able to go and to pray and to, to be there. I, I, I am asking, I said it sincerely uh, to the uh, to the Israeli police that they find a way I don't know how they do it. They're, they're, they're probably the smartest, uh, <laughs> the, you know, the folks in terms of their creativity and what they do and how they do it. I've seen the Israeli, uh, the IDF and others just do amazing things. And I just can't believe they can't find a way to protect uh, and to give rights and give access to um, Jewish people and others who want to go up and, uh, and, and have some form of worship uh, to the God of Abraham. So I, I would just tell you right now, you have not only my support in words, you have my support in action. And there's people listening right now, Yehuda, that are going to get on board and we are going to support that. You're going to see it. You're going to see the, the, the response. There's going to be a, there's going to be support financially. There's support prayer wise. You know what my support as far as if the opportunity comes, I'm telling you, the time that you go back up there, if I find I get on an airplane and come up and, uh, and go with you, I am 100 percent with you uh, and what Liba is doing in the, the, the conference yesterday when I saw the amount of people that came together in such a short period of time, I knew the hand of God was upon upon this. So I have to commend you. Uh, boy, I sure wish that you'd start eating again, but I understand that you're uh, you're standing for what you're standing with, and we're going to enter in with you on that. But uh, we're praying for you, my brother. We really are, and we're believing that uh, this is going to make a huge difference in uh, mm -hmm. people's view of uh, of not only Israel, but the world. That's why I'm calling it a, a global call. <laughs> The world need to get, the gets, needs to get on board with this. And so we're going to do our part starting today. Uh, folks are going to hear about the specifics of it. They can go to bfaprojects.com and they're going to see something. I don't know if it's going to say Liba, prayer, freedom to prayer, something that's going to be there, a box where they can give a tax deductible donation. 100% of it, 100% of it is going to go to Liba and, uh, and, and, and the efforts of, of bringing people to the Temple Mount. So I have to thank you. I know you're extremely busy. You took I out some to time. Thank, I have to thank you. I, really, well. I have to thank you. I really appreciate that. You're, you're really a, a true friend. Mm. And I believe that one of the things that, the, in my eyes, in the, the uh, days of redemption that we see in front of our eyes today, yes. is one thing is the Jewish people coming back home to their homeland. But one other thing is the support of Gentiles from all over the world, this yes. Jewish to this godly phenomena yeah. and this is something in my eyes just like returning to the temple mount yes sir. the support of gentiles from around the world is part of the prophecy of the prophet oh, man hey so i gotta ask you one question uh was it too embarrassing when i was speaking hebrew did you understand a few of the words that i said <laughs> we understood everything it was touching the heart you gotta see you should have seen it you should have seen it it's a video you should have seen the reaction people were going crazy okay wonderful well listen we're with you my friend uh, blessings to you as you go forward, and you will see a response immediately. We're going to be uploading this immediately. You're going to see an immediate response, and you should just know that those of us are over here and around the world are standing with our Jewish brothers and sisters and all people who want to ascend God's holy hill and uh, be able to pray. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Okay. Well, like I like to say, there you have it. Uh, Yehuda just gave us uh, exactly what's going on. We talked about everything. You're hearing stuff that even the world hasn't heard, really, I don't think, and and I'm so appreciative of that. But you know what? Standing with Israel is one thing with the mouth. I think it's also got to be with the feet. I think there's a way for us to do something significant regarding this. And so I have called our administrator, Karen Baynard, and I've told her what I feel led to do. Uh, she agreed. I've called the key maker and he agreed. And so we are going to have up right now a campaign, Freedom to Pray on the Temple Mount campaign, where everything that we raise is going to go specifically to helping those folks from around Israel come to the Temple Mount and be able to go up and, and to continue to have a presence there. I believe it's biblical. I believe it's practical. I believe it's also what it means to stand with Israel. Uh, we're going to step in right now, the BFA, and I, and I don't need to, you know, make a big deal out of this, but I'm just going to let you know <laughs> we're going to take a step of faith and we're going to put in the first seed. And that first seed, we're trying to raise at least $5,000. I'd like to have it done in the next couple of weeks. We're going to put in the first 1000 
<laughs> and I know everyone's looking at me like, what are you talking about? We're going to do that because I believe with vision comes provision. And I've been led uh, through this whole process with Yehuda regarding the Temple Mount. I think God's hand has been upon it. So by faith, I'm asking uh, uh, for those of you that are willing to go to the project page. You're going to see an actual campaign there. You should see the first thousand is there. And that is from us, the BFA staff. And uh, folks, we're putting in the first thousand because we believe in what it is that uh, we believe is going to happen. We think there's going to be change on the Temple Mount. We think that this has got something to do with a bigger plan uh, than just us, of course. So that's what it is. Go to BFAProjects.com. Support this um, aspect. You're going to see everything else that we're doing. And I've always called people to look at that. But right now, 100% of what we do for this uh, Freedom to Pray Uh, on the Temple Mount, whatever you give to that specific project is going 100% to them. Tax deductible for you here in the United States. And of course, they also have, I'm going to have some information uh, that you can get more information about what they do and their organization, uh, etc. But again, you all, we are working. This is a last minute situation, but it just came up. There's the article here for you to read. Here's the video for you to watch. Like I like to say, if you will keep watching, if you will keep listening, If you will keep reading, we will keep working.